Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Inside the Clinch. Today, we're honored and joined by Bellator's undefeated middleweight prospect, Magic Norbert Noveni. He's an, a Hungarian mixed martial Thank artist. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, he has an amateur record of 3-0 and is currently 5-0 and as a professional with four submissions and one decision. Norbert, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Let, let's, let's jump right into it. So after your last fight, you said you wanted to get back into the ring ASAP. Um, is there any fight for you that makes sense right now? Is there anything you have in the works? Um, Cause you sounded very eager to get back as soon as you can. Yeah. I was very disappointed with my loss. It, you know, it was a first round finish, but I'm very, I was very disappointed how it went. Cause I made a silly mistake with my footwork and it was something that I was drilling. Cause I knew the guy, cause I had a guy who fought, fought in, in my camp who fought exactly like him. And literally I've been working on one stuff and I was just, for some reason, I don't know. I was in the zone, but I was so relaxed in there. Like I was so confident that I was too relaxed. So I just made a silly mistake. I was a bit too slow and I was very pissed off. So at the time I was like, I need to get back to like redeem myself. Um, but at the moment, I feel like I, I want to wait a bit more. I, I want to improve. So obviously if there's a show, I'll go, but I'm not, I'm not going to rush it. Do you get what I mean? Of like I want to, I, I want to make sure that my next performance is going to be clinical. Do you have anyone like your, your eyes set on any target on who you want next? I'm not really like people always ask me this, but in order to be the best, I'm going to have to go through everybody. So uh, step by step, I'll, I'll go through everyone. So I'm, I, I don't really care. How do you feel you'd match up against uh, someone like Austin Vanderfort? He's also in your division. You guys are both undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is got to be honest with you. He's got very, very nice ground and pan. He's got a lovely duck under. Uh, on call. I, I, I've been watching him as well. Uh, but he's he's got a very nice combat duck, and uh, he's got he's, he transfers his wrestling into MMA very nicely. Um, I feel like it could be a good fight. We both have, in a way, wrestling background. He's got the American wrestling style, got the European wrestling style, uh, which is a lot better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's a lot more. Obviously, American wrestling is great. It's very, very cardio based and fitness based, driving doubles and all, all that. But like European wrestling style is a bit, I, I find it a bit fancier. Um, but uh, also my striking, I feel like it might be a bit uh, high level than his. So it would be a good fight. But at the, sa at the same time, he's a tough guy. So no rushing it. If Berto gives, like, Berto tells me to fight him, I guess it's my job to do so. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, so my first question to you is, uh, so your father is a well-accomplished mixed martial artist himself. I believe he's a Olympic champion, Greg Roman, and also a kickboxing world champion, correct? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. so is, that, is that why you chose to pursue MMA, uh, to follow in your father's footsteps, or was this uh, like an independent decision? Yes or no. So I, I always done loads of different sports. Uh, they include fighting by the basketball, golf, gym, that everything. So it made me do a lot of different sports. And for some reason, it ended up being fighting that really stuck with me. So obviously, then it definitely had an influence on me. And even my uh, my um, uncle, my mom's side, uh, I'm not sure if it's WBC or WBO, maybe like intercontinental champion as well in boxing. So fighting is in my family. Uh, and my granddad was a wrestler as well. So it definitely had a little impact on me. But I did so many sports, and it's funny how that's the one that stuck with me. So I don't know if it's because of that or it's maybe it's in my blood. It's in my blood. I don't know. So let me ask you: How did you get your uh, nickname, Magic? Where does that come from? Um, it's not. It's nothing really. It's very silly, actually. It's uh, when when I was a kid, um, I didn't speak English very well because obviously I'm hungry, um, but I was already very cocky. So I remember with my mum was like, oh, let's make your first email address. And I was trying to come up with a name, my email address. And I came, I wanted to say Magical Norby, but it ended up being Magic Norby. And I started, and I used it on Instagram as a username when I was like 12 or 13. And then when I moved to England, everyone started just like joking about with that name because it's a very cocky name, I don't know. <laughs> and it just stuck with me and I like it, yeah. Did you did you learn uh, any new magic tricks uh, since you got that name or? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Since, since yeah, since I've been with London, it's been always always had a little magic to me. But since I've been with London shoot fighters, yeah, my you know my magic just leveled up. You know, I used to be a little like I used to do that party tricks. Now I'm like proper Harry Potter wizard. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. I leveled up. <laughs> 
That's so, awesome. So uh, you mentioned, uh, you, you know, you're training in um, in London shoot, shoot Fighting, right? That's the name of your gym? Yeah, London Shoot Fighting, yeah, yeah. So um, I noticed that your striking stance strongly resembles that of MVP, which who I know trains in that gym as well. So um, I guess how much of your fighting style is unique to you and how much of your fighting style is um, adapted from your teammates and your coaches? Uh, a lot of it. Like, I like, I watch a lot of guys outside of the gym as well and I always pick stuff up. Uh, obviously, my teammates and my coaches have a huge influence on me. Um, like Paige, Paige is like a big bro. And like everyone, just like my shipman, who's always about to middleweight him. Um on my grand game to Felix Trinkhammer, he's an up and coming guy, but his grand is different style. Obviously, my coach is like everyone's everyone's got like influences on my style. It's I just try to put it together and just try to mix it up in a way that most people don't. So I'm like I've tried to mix up my wrestling and my grand game with that point style or with that bouncy style that I've got, which you don't see a lot of people do. So I'd say that's where I make it more unique that pick up unique styles mm. and put it together to make it a bit more unique, I'd say. Okay. Um, so your, your five professional fights, four of them, you won via submission, spectacular submissions. My question to you is how are you so good at uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Or did you practice it, start practicing from a very young age? Because you have some in your professional uh, career and then you have a few uh, submissions in your amateur career as well. So, uh, like we're very impressed by it and we want to know how do you, how are you so good thank you i don't know to be fair my favorite fight is my own decision fight it's very annoying because it's very hard to find but that's like my my best performance and i didn't do a lot of ground uh mainly striking but that was my favorite one but with grind i think i've been doing wrestling and, and all that since i was a kid but recently i've been training with a lot of Obviously, my, my usual crew, but we came, we, we got some very high level guys, some of the best Jesus guys in the UK with us training, uh, were training with us. So I'd say the last two, three months, my Jesus just leveled up. So compared to what it was before, I feel like I was like again on a different level. So hopefully, the next part, I'm going to bring in some like real ground magic, like shit. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like my, my Jesus just leveled up recently, even more. But I don't know, just since I was a kid, I've been doing it. So. Another first round uh, submission for you on your next fight. Let's go. I don't listen. I don't know because at the same time, I like I like fighting. I like entertaining. So as I said, the most entertaining fight I've ever been in was a decision fight. Went to the to the end, but I, had, I never had much. Like the amount of fun I had, had is just I was smiling the whole fight. So if anyone watching or if you guys, it's, uh, Bellator did a, a replay of that Dublin show against Fleury. And you can find that. But and if you watch it, I'm smiling the whole time. I had so much fun. So, you know, if my fight, if, if I have to choose between a first round finish, like my last fight, but it goes the same way, or go to decision, like the fight before against Fleury, I might take the decision fight because I had more fun. But um, at the same time, I, tr I try to be the, the more technical fighter. So if my technicality takes me to win that in the first round, then... So be it. Yeah, your fight against Fleury was was great. I mean, your striking was great. You landed those overhands that I thought was going to put him out. You know, every shot I thought, yes. holy crap, he might go out with that one. Um, yeah, so yeah, that, that was that. a very entertaining fight. Yeah, I just made a bit of a meal out of it. I was, I got a bit too trigger happy. Also, I got very like excited, so I was rushing. You know, I could have finished. I feel like even in the first round, I could have finished in the second round, and then was the third round. I was just like just dancing and showboating and just being silly. If I'm not mistaken, I think you got a 30-26 uh, on that card, right? Yes. So I feel like the, it was a 10-8, 10-8 round. And yeah, maybe. So 3-10-8. Yeah, very, yeah, very I'm, I'm, not sure about, I'm not sure about the last round, though. I'm not sure. That might have been a 10-9, uh, but I'm not sure. It might have been a 10-8 as well. But again, I just had so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you look like it, man. What has it been like training during COVID? You know, this past year has been tough for everyone. You know, some gyms are closed. A lot of people can't get together with their training partners, with their coaches. Um, so what has this past been your past year been like for you as far as training? It's very weird. Um, I feel like I've been training more than ever before. Um, also, I've been enjoying training a bit more, but it's been getting to me in a way that um, I'm training so much and obviously I can't perform. And at the same time, there's nothing else, like nothing else going on outside. So the, the only thing, I do outside the gym really other than my home life like little bits like that is every, like a, a walk with my friend 
you know, every weekend, one, one walk. So, you know, it gets to that day is the same same routine every single day. And then you train your ass off. You, we got a lot of new people coming in because obviously there are not a lot of gyms open. So I've got a lot of sparring partners, a lot of rounds, and then there's nothing else happening really. Um, it is what it is. I'm working my ass off. I'm doing the best I can. So I just feel like I've leveled up since. So, yeah. Yeah, so Norbert, you're you're currently 20, 21 years old, correct? Yeah. What is the, what is the pressure like being such a young fighter in the game and being so well accomplished already? Um, eight eight fights undefeated uh, record. What is it like? Is there a lot of pressure being so young, or is it the opposite? I, I don't think the pressure is about age or being undefeated or any of the other stuff. It's more like I put pressure on myself due to what I want to be. Do you get what I mean? So I've got I've got goals and I've got ideas in my head. And and you know, sometimes it doesn't go your way, even in training or or even just in life in general and it can break you a little bit. Um I feel like that most of the pressure comes from that rather than age. I don't really consider like the age that much now because if you said it two years ago, yeah, I was still a kid. even now like I'm still a kid, but like I'm 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 growing up a little bit, so I'm not using age as an excuse as much. Uh, it's more like I've got stuff in my head that I want to achieve and I want to do, and the pressure is is there. It's more like I'm putting pressure on myself due to that rather than age and shit like that. Yeah, I mean, you certainly don't fight like a kid, so. <laughs> Thank you. So in an interview with Cage Side Press, you said you wanted to beat John Jones's record and become the youngest champion in MMA. What do you think is the right path to get you there to, to achieve that goal? Because you're, you're on the right path right now. You know, you're undefeated. You're doing so in dominant fashion and you just turned 21. So, you know, you still have plenty of time to, to beat that record. So what do you think will be the right steps to get you there? So to be honest with you, there's been my dream since I was, uh, since I was four, no, 12 to be John, like, yeah, yeah 12. Since, since John Jones became the champ, like that's, that's been my dream to, to become the youngest champ. Uh, but, I never expected really Corona to happen. I imagine if that that was one year, or like even now, it's almost like I haven't had the fight since October. So I feel like if that didn't happen, it would have been, it could have been very realistic. I'm not gonna lie. But now this kind of this Corona the last year or so slowed slowed my uh, pace down a little bit. Um, it's I still have an idea in my head. Uh, I would still love to do that, uh, but I'm not sure if it's if it's, that's going to be as easy as, as that. But, you know, if someone can do that, that can be me. So, uh, you know, I, I try my best. We'll see how it goes. What would you say is your ultimate goal in MMA? And do you ever see yourself uh, fighting in another organization such as the UFC or any other or big organization, maybe one championship? Or do you see yourself being in Bellator um, for the remainder of your career? Yeah, it's it's very in the future. I'm, I'm, I'm loving Bellator right now. So they, they look up to me and they... You know, they they literally are great to me. So uh, I'm very happy with them. Uh, but my my dream is to be the greatest fighter. Like that's that should I think that's everyone's everyone's uh, dream to be the the best fighter in the world, to be the greatest. So uh, if I can do that, I'm working so hard. I'm still young. I'm I'm doing big things already. I'd say. You know, I'm not I'm not saying it like that's oh, I'm, I made it or whatever because I haven't. You know, I, I'll say that like a few people always message me. You know when we were kids like oh man like I always knew when you would made it make it and I was like I haven't made it yet when I'm gonna make it when I'm gonna make it you know I'm gonna be all over the place and I'm gonna be the greatest in the world so but that's I'd say that's that's my ultimate goal we're looking forward to that man uh Bellator uh is very big on doing those grand prix for for title fights um we've seen them do it in heavyweight lightweight I believe they're doing it at featherweight now um, you know, if, if they offered this opportunity at middleweight, would you prefer to, to go after the belt Grand Prix style or do you prefer each fighter going up the rankings individually and kind of uh, fighting man to man and each person er earning their title shot? I, I like this Grand Prix style. It's, it's quite cool. Uh, but at the same time, it does. I feel like it does put a little extra pressure on a, on a fighter and maybe it would like maybe it wouldn't happen that way in, in real life. It w you wouldn't get that much pressure on you. And you would still go to to the title the same way. So let's say the champ is here, and you're on this, you know, on this. Wait, where you can see in the camera. So the champ is here, and you're on this side uh, of the brackets, whatever. And you fight this guy, and this guy, and that guy, and then end up with the champ. 
then that would kind of, in a way, happen in real life, like, without the Grand Prix as well. I just feel like it would be less pressure. But I, I like it. It's, you know, it's not like a, 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 a one-night tournament, like, back in Fridays, or like two-night <laughs> tournaments and stuff like that. But it is, it is really cool. The golden days. <laughs> yeah. So, Norbert, um, so we're in a pandemic right now, and, you know, um, I'm not sure whether Bellator is having fans back in the arena, but uh, do you feel like that affects you in any way, having fans as opposed to not having fans in the arena? Does that, do you think that affects your performance at all? Do you drive off the fans' uh, energy? Yeah, 100%. I mean, in my last performance, it definitely did. So when I walk out, I like to take the energy in. Like, that gives you a little, like, you know, a little extra boost. Yeah. And my last, like, I remember I was walking on my last fight, I had a big breath, and I, I'm like, it's, not, it's just not the same. Like, as I'm walking out, like, I remember... It was like an empty arena. I was like trying to imagine the people. I had to imagine the people to give me the extra pump. Um, and and I was not feeling it. Like walking, I just didn't feel right. Do you get what I mean? So And I could feel it. As I, as I said, I was a bit too relaxed. You know, I'm a bit more wired up. And now if I go, if I was to have a fight again without fans, I'd go in there knowing what, to have, like, what it feels like. Um but uh, and 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 now even now I'm imagining myself like how I'll hype myself up because I've done that I've been there I know how to do it now, but uh, but for my last fight it definitely affected me it definitely did. Do you usually walk into the arena with music like headphones on or you're just walking in without? Because yesterday Eric and I were watching a UFC fight the Kevin Holland and uh, uh, Derek Brunson fight and we were just wondering why some fighters have earphones in their ear while they're walking in when the music is playing. So we want to know maybe you could explain it to us why they do that. I guess you can hear the music better. I had one fight, my first pro fight, uh, because it was, it was being along with the music. So I was like, there's play own music. I just put in a headphone. I'd rather walk out to my song. But like, usually I play, I, I, I get songs that I really enjoy. And like the the one that, again, I'm going to bring up the Dublin fight against Luke because that was big like 13,000 people and I remember like walking out and I've got like uh, a song from Arthur King like uh, oh sorry King Arthur uh, and um, it's like a very like drummy and, and like very like medieval song I remember walking out and I heard the booze and everything it did feel like I'm like I'm like, walking in front of like I'm literally I'm about to defend my place or whatever and then like hundreds of Viking ships sailing like towards me and I'm going to fight all of them so uh, I I enjoy having you know like the screams and everything. I like to hear both the song and the scream. But I guess it depends if you know sometimes the screams are too loud or whatever. But again, there's no screams there, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I walked out like that. Maybe didn't like the song or something. I don't know. Yeah, it was just it was a random thought while we were watching it, and we were just we were debating why fighters do that. <laughs> so we talking to a fighter now. Uh, thought might be a good person to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I. I I, I don't know. It depends. Like as I said, I walked out like that once just because they didn't want to play my yeah, music. Yeah. So I was like, cool. Maybe that was the reason. So. All righty, Norbert. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, we're really excited for your future. We'd love to have you back on the show whenever you get uh, your next fight announced. And, would, you know, if you'd love to share your thoughts with it, we'd love to have you back whenever. Yeah, thank you so much for your yeah, time. Yeah, 100%. Here. Thank thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. We're looking forward to see you rise to the top, man. Best of luck. Cheers, man. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.